How you doing everyone? We're gonna be doing another Star 650 maintenance video today. This time we're gonna be doing the valve adjustments and there is no better time to do the valve adjustments when the carburetor is removed from the bike for cleaning or otherwise. These are solid lifters. There is clearance that needs to be maintained on the intake and exhaust valves. Most of you probably already know, you get that little ticking sound when the bike warms up. The job is not complicated. It is labor intensive. As you can see, you first have to get the carb removed. There's some other covers that need to be removed. Got to remove some covers on the side as, as indicators on both sides of the bike in order to get the timing just right so you have that, that lash that you can then measure. Things that have to be done. You take this to a shop, you're going to expect to pay money because of the time involved. If they do it right, I would hope you'd have a reputable shop. But I'm just saying, if you want it done right, you do it yourself. So let's do that now, let's get started. We'll start off really easy. Just pull out the spark plug wires. Bet I could do that twice without messing up. See? Ultimately, we're gonna end up removing the spark plugs too. The reason is we're gonna have to rotate this engine as we work with it. We don't want compression in here. So we're gonna pull the spark plugs now. If you don't have a compressor at home before you take out the spark plug, you have a little canned air. Just get cut out before you open the combustion chamber. There you go. Be using a standard 18 mil spark plug socket. So we're gonna remove this ignition coil now and fold it back over here. That should be good. The coil will just lay here out of the way. Now we can loosen up our head covers for removal, we'll start in the rear. There's a clamp on this hose that goes to the air box that blocks the cover. So I'm gonna slide this clamp off for now, there it is. The top portion of the cover just slides right out. There we go, it's gone. This leaves us now with the remaining bottom portion of the cover, secured by two nuts in the rear. We can see one of them's right over here. This is 10 millimeter. Same thing on the other side. These are rubber mounted to metal, so they need to be pried off very gently from here. They will stick. There you go. Do the other side now. The forward rubber mounts are pins pushing inward, so this whole unit will slide forward and out of the head. These are also a little sticky, so they need to be worked. Up and out. There you go. Very gently. Take your time. we could see those pins as we push forward came dislodged from the front of the head. The last thing I'll be doing for the back cylinder is the removal of this cover for the storage area. And this buys another inch of space here as the plastic is removed. With that, the back cylinder is now prepared for valve adjustment. All I need to do is remove the covers when I'm ready to do so. Now we'll move to preparations for the front cylinder. Front is very much like the rear, except I won't have as much room to work I'll be using an Allen key instead to get into here. We'll slide the cover out gently. This is the only easy way to remove this cover in this direction and clear the bolts up top. 
these bolts up here inhibit it from coming out in any other direction. So down and out by the fuel filter. The lower portion of the front is similar, except there are four screws that go through. There are not the little pegs up front. So we have to remove two screws on each side and then take the cover off. Front cover can now be lifted off. We do have to make sure that we carefully pry off the rubber seals again from the metal as they will be stuck. Very good, disconnected, we can pull it out. Negotiating the piece out from the high side around these high nuts so we don't damage it. And we got it out. That covers the prerequisite work for the front valve covers, done. Next, we're gonna open up the inspection hole. It's right over here. And also, there's a cover here to be able to turn the engine. Uh, these are like plastic chrome. They're not very durable, but they're, they're flathead, but they're also dished. They're round in the, in the middle. I found for this one, uh, a nickel works well to open this one, and a penny works well to open this one. If, if they get marred up, you could just replace them. They're not that big of a deal. But if you're trying to avoid marring them, like I said, Nickel fits this size well, so just open that now. I'm using a vice grip. You can just see it's a nickel and a vice grip. And then I just replace that nickel with a penny. Stick it in here and open this one up. And I found that that's about the best way. If you use a screwdriver, it doesn't grab the surface area as much and you tend to damage these a bit more. That's just my thoughts on the matter. Just take these out. And that's it. That was all the prep work just get underway. We're finally gonna start this project and we're gonna do so with the front cylinder. So now we're gonna remove the valve covers for the intake here, the exhaust over there, and this side cover over here. This time I'll now remove the sprocket cover. Got two screws here, hex. Should be a rubber gasketed seal on here, so gonna just jar it loose. There it goes. And with that, this covers off. Bring this off to the side. The next step will call for rotating the engine with a 14 millimeter socket. And I am telling you right now, you will use a deep wall socket to do this. And the reason is, quite simply, that a deep wall socket cannot fall into this cavity. If you do not use a deep wall socket and the socket gets caught on the lip and falls into this cavity, do not come crying to me because I have warned you right now, do not do this unless you use a deep well socket. Because I'm working on the front cylinder, I'm putting in that 14 mil, and I'm going to rotate the engine clockwise. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure the engine's in neutral. And with that clean 14 millimeter socket, I'm going to rotate the engine until I see the eye mark. It could be anywhere within the 360 degrees. If you think this is easy holding a camera, you are mistaken. That was the TI right there. The TI is for the rear cylinder. We're looking for the I. There it is right there. Oh, oh. I gotta go back. The marking is now perfectly aligned to the I. We need to go around the other side now and verify the position of the dot to see if we're on the right one. We may need to go around another turn to find out. As you can see, I got lucky. This dot here on the sprocket matches this little mark on the very top. They're lined up which means that I do not need to rotate the engine another 360 degrees. If I was wrong, this dot would be somewhere here on the other side of this sprocket. When the dot lines up to the top of the engine on this tab, we know that we're good. Now, when I open these tappet covers here, these valve covers, I should be able to rock them. They should make a tapping noise. They should be loose. We're gonna find out. We're ready to open these now. Cover will be 10 millimeter. light wrap on the cover with something soft loosen the seal that's it and I lift off the cover now the final test before we begin is grab 
to tap it firmly and lift it up and down to hear a click. Hear that? We know it's in a good position. We're ready to test this one. These are the margins right here. Ideally, we're looking for four thousandths of an inch uh, between five and three. We're going to test it right now. Three slides right through, no problem. Very little to no drag. Move up to four. Four slides in with a nice drag. I feel a nice drag on four. Let's see what five does. I could I could actually slide five in with a nice drag. So I really want to. Go up to six and see what we got. See if this needs to be tightened. I can't get six in, so it's actually on five. It is within tolerance. Ideally, though, I do want it a smidge tighter on four, so I'm going to do that now. For this, I have a three size hex key and a 10 mil. I'm going to loosen this nut now. With the nut loosened, I'll be able to turn this just a hair and insert our four into here, like so. I will turn this down on the four until it drags, a nice drag. That seems nice. And holding the hex key steady in its exact position, I will retighten this. I'll stop right there and give it a recheck. Also, what I want to recheck for is I want to make sure that five does not pass anymore. And that will confirm that everything is correct before I give the final tightening again. Here's five. And five no longer fits inside. I'll go back to four and put four in for the final tightening. Now you can't get a torque wrench in on this, so you have to make it tight, but you, you have to use a little bit of judgment here. Go and hit it one more time. Really nice. There we go, that one's set. Completed with a valve, there's no need to have this cover off and risk contamination. I'll clean the outside of this cover, clean the inside if necessary, put a little bit of oil around this seal right here, then a quick cleaning of this mating surface, just to be sure. Everything's nice and clean now. I drop that cover right back on. Don't risk contaminating anything. Put the screws right back in. I'm gonna snug these down. They're probably about 10 foot pounds, that's it. If you get a torque wrench in here, you could do that. I just do it by feel. So just like that, and that's good enough for me. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, by all means, get a torque wrench on there. And there we go, done, never leak. Now we have this one behind the front wheel. A little less convenient, as you can see. Ratchet seems out of the question here. Getting the room to work. There we go. Probably could've got a ratchet on the top one. Now, before I do the bottom one, I wanna pack this with paper towel because there may be some oil leaking out. Yeah, we had some oil leak out, as expected. Unavoidable. That's what the paper towel is for. We'll check the looseness of the uh, of the tappet here. Sounds good. It's ready for a check and adjustment. Exhaust is between 12 and 17. Ideal is 15. So I'll just try 15 first and see where we're at. 15 feels good. I'll try 17, which is the outer limit. See what that does. Yeah, I could get 17 in there. It's on the outer limit. I could adjust this one too. Six passes, but not seven. That's what I'm looking for. So I'll tie it down.
nice and tight on six and no pass on seven. This one is done. Clean everything up, we'll close it up. This cover has been cleaned up both on the outside and the inside. Pull out this paper towel, clean up these mating surfaces here too. We'll pop that cover right back on. This one's probably the worst of all of them given the location. As a matter of inconvenience, I would think. Again, not being able to get a torque wrench on here, uh, best judgment will be used to tighten down these nice and snug. Top one, bottom one will be a bit tricky. Done, this cover's finished. Click the link above for part two of this series on the valve adjustment and hit that like button below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>